They say there's nothing safer than bricks and mortar. But if we don't look after our homes, it doesn't take long for the cracks to appear. You can see daylight through the wall. I'm absolutely amazed that this roof is still standing. In this brand new series, we'll be rooting out rot and going up in flames, searching out families who fear their homes are about to crash around their ears. At some point, this whole beam will snap. We'll be trying to help them bring their homes back from the brink of disaster, but it's certainly going to be a bumpy ride. It really is falling to bits. Tonight, to kick off the new series, she thought she'd found perfection. It was our dream house. It was our forever home. What they've got is a major health hazard. In two days in incubator, it looks like that. So that's what you're inhaling. What is it? No, I'm going to hold my breath. He thought it needed a simple cosmetic refurb. When we bought the house, uh, structurally, we thought it was sound. Little did they know, it could all fall down. The worst case scenario is that you'd have to rebuild the whole end of the house. Now I'm really worried. They've ended up with a property in crisis. There's no way the problems with this house are going to be fixed with wallpaper. The picturesque village of Narborough in Leicestershire is home to Jamie and Charlotte Bates and five-year-old son Charlie. Like many people, they were looking for an older property they could turn into a dream family home. We were looking for something with period features, with some character to it, not these run-of-the-mill new builds, something that needed a bit of work doing to it. So when Charlotte spotted a grand-looking Edwardian house for sale, she couldn't wait to go and see it. From that first step into the house, I knew it was the house for us and we had to have it. It was obvious that a lot of cosmetic work needed doing, wallpaper, curtains, carpets. Jamie's a shop fitter and thought the renovation work looked pretty straightforward. I definitely thought I'd be able to take the work on myself. It was stuff that didn't phase us, really. And when they bought it a year ago for £275,000, they were delighted. We actually thought it was a bit of a steal, to be honest, for the size of it. We could just about afford it by scraping all the pennies together, but knew that we had to have it, really. On the day that we got the keys, I was so excited. I don't think I slept the night before at all. Little did they know this would become the first of many sleepless nights. Soon after moving in, their dream home began to reveal a catalogue of hidden horrors. When we got in and started to clean, we started to look more closely at things. I saw cracks, I saw damp patches virtually in every room. Things weren't hanging quite straight. Doors weren't staying open or staying shut, they were just moving as they wanted to. It was then they discovered the shocking truth. The entire upstairs floor was rather alarmingly sloping. The floor dropped five inches from the bathroom door to the outside wall. In fact, it seemed the whole house was literally cracking up. You don't know quite how bad it's going to be, if it's a hairline crack or whether actually it looks like a wall's going to fall down. And I was really, really worried. Then, when storm showers hit, water started to invade. We could hear a dripping, and before we knew it, we could see a huge puddle of water on the floor. There's some, a couple of holes there, there, and one more there. On top of that, when they stripped the wallpaper back, they revealed sinister-looking slimy black mould. Kind of raises major concerns as to, you know, why it's there and where you stand health-wise. It seems their dream for this house is over. This is no cosmetic fix. Jamie realises his shop-fitting skills are no match for these problems, and they urgently need help. I'm not really sure where to go with it. This is beyond me. These are things I cannot do. It does detract from the initial love of the house. You begin to see it as a building instead of your home. We need a guardian angel to come in and tell us what's wrong with the house, how it can be fixed and how much it's going to cost, and then we've got to try and find the money from somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything that can be done to help this family turn their problem property into the wonderful home of their dreams? It's easy to fall in love with a house and get carried away with big ideas of how to make it look beautiful. But there's no point in putting new kitchens and bathrooms in if it could potentially fall into the ground. Hi, Hi come on through. How are you? <laughs> the first thing that jumps out at me is the smell and the black mould in the sitting room. Perhaps we should not just be worried about the health of the house, but also the family. Have you had any coughs and colds? In there? Well, yes, there have been coughs and colds. Charlie's got an awful cough at the moment, and I had one over uh, when we first moved in, and it hung on for a couple of weeks. There are various different types of black mould, and some are more toxic than others. If it's one of the worst types, then it's not great to be living with it. It is considered a very major health risk, and you can have long-term side effects from it. So we need to get it out quickly. It's a sign that there's definitely water getting in, and we need to get to the root of why it's wet and dry it out fast. Some slimy black moulds can be toxic. They grow in wet, humid conditions. It can be a health risk when found in the home. The mould generates spores that are airborne and invisible to the human eye. When inhaled, they can cause breathing difficulties, attacks to the nervous system, and even bleeding of the lungs and nose. If you have these symptoms and significant mould in your house, it's worth seeing a GP. Mould is not the only water-related problem in this house. Water is top of my list of home wreckers, and Jamie and Charlotte's extension is not doing a very good job of keeping it out. As soon as you get any water on top of the roof, it, it's coming down in torrents, which is why we leave the buckets in situ pretty much all of the time. Right, here and... and yes, and again, another here. one here. I mean, it's sort of relatively flimsily built, this extension, and a flat roof is not ideal for the UK because it's always prone to leaking. I thought it was just going to be rip the kitchen out and put a new kitchen in. I didn't think there was actually going to be any leaks or anything. I thought it was going to be putting my nice wallpaper up. And so what was it in reality? It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Day-to-day -day living is just dreadful, um, you know, with buckets and things like that. It makes it really hard. Poor Charlotte. And there are further problems outside. They show me some cracks that have appeared in the walls. Did you notice any problems with the house when you bought it? Initially, no. But as I've been glancing back at the house, you don't have to know too much to think, well, a lot of the bricks are up and down, there's cracks, which are worrying signs. This crack here is a new crack, is it, or old? It's something that we'd had filled, and it does look as though it's opening back out again. It hasn't been filled for that long, so it's really, really worrying. In a basic way, you can look at the outside of a house and see if it looks as though it's all straight and square. And that's not. So far, Jamie and Charlotte have pointed out the obvious problems. However, on the side of the house, there's an issue they haven't noticed, which could turn out to be the worst of all. Now, here, it feels like it's bowing quite significantly. The centre of this wall is sort of squashing outwards, and this render here is popping off. Oh, had you noticed the bowing before? I thought it was the render, but now, obviously, standing at this angle, you can see quite clearly that it's not. The worst-case scenario is that you'd have to rebuild the whole end of the house. That's sort of... Now I'm really worried. Now we're looking at walls that are bowing, to which I've no idea what it's going to cost or how long it's going to take. Uh, you know, if there ever was a schedule on this house, it's, it's now completely out the window. Well, it's just another structural problem, isn't it, when before we just thought it was virtually cosmetic? Yeah. But upstairs, there were further signs that the gable wall was bending outwards. It looks as though this floor here is sloping significantly down. Pulling back the carpet reveals further worrying evidence. A piece of wood has been used to cover the gap caused by the wall falling away from the joist ends, and it's the joists that are holding up the entire first floor. The joists are bearing onto this wall, but because the wall is bowing out, the joists are bearing onto it an awful lot less. So as soon as those come off the wall altogether, because the wall has bowed so much, there's nothing actually holding us up up here at all. It's quite shocking, because obviously if this has moved 20 years ago and someone's just put a piece of wood down, <laughs> how's that going to rectify anything? It's not got better in 20 no. years, will it? 
And perhaps we should move away from here in case we end up downstairs. <laughs> So many structural problems are a bitter pill to swallow for Charlotte, who thought shopfitter Jamie could easily transform this property into their dream home. What made you think you could take a project like this on? With Jamie's capabilities, I thought he could do everything. There's nothing that I wouldn't think he could do. So do you find there's lots of things that Jamie can't do? Yes. <laughs> That's what makes me worry, because I've always put my trust in him that he can do it for us. Oh, no. He must feel he's letting you down, cos you... Well, I hope he... not. I hope not. I would hate for him to think that, but, um, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one. It could easily cost thousands to put right. The plan B would be to pay someone to get it done for us if I can't do it, and there isn't that pot of money, you know? It's, you know, how mm -hmm. far do you go with these things? Have you got any money at all to put to... We've got £10,000 that, mm. that I'm hoping and praying will be enough to put right the wrongs. Jamie and Charlotte's house has bowing and cracking walls, a leaking flat roof and a serious dose of slimy black mould. I'm not sure 10 grand is going to be enough to fix the problems. Personally, I think that the building is still moving. I think, you know, you're talking about a lot of money to get it to a point where it's sort of stable. I mean, are you more worried or less worried? Um, I suppose it's worse than we were expecting in that, actually, structurally, the house isn't... Safe. This, this could be massive, you know, it's, it's, it's not about decor, it's not about cosmetic, it's, it's about getting the house structurally right before we start any of it. Yeah, that's certainly true. There is no way the problems with this house are going to be fixed with wallpaper. I feel a bit scared because the problems seem quite serious and it actually seems quite dangerous. The feelings that we both have towards this house have definitely changed, but to discover uh, the severity of some of these issues is right now put us in a, quite a dark place. Spending all their money on structural repairs is not something they were expecting to have to do. But the problems have to be faced, and the first step is to give this house the survey of all surveys. The whole wall, then, is leaning by about the same amount. We need to get to the bottom of the problems with Jamie and Charlotte's dream home. It's just going to cost more and more money the longer you leave it. When Jamie and Charlotte Bates went in search of a period property they could renovate and turn into their dream family home, they focused on character and charm. And when they came across this impressive Edwardian house, they thought they'd struck gold. Edwardian houses were built between 1901 and 1910. Designed as family homes for the middle classes at the time of national prosperity, they were built on sizeable plots with gardens front and back. These properties were often large with elaborate external decoration and detailing. They are now a century old and if they haven't been maintained, can be in a serious state of disrepair. Jamie and Charlotte's lovely big house is full of cracks, leaks and damp, with signs of structural issues and a health hazard they cannot ignore, especially when some Charlie's around. But they only have a budget of 10,000 pounds to fix the whole house. Right now, you know, constantly worried uh, about the house, you know, whether things are falling away, the cost implications before we even look forward into, you know, the decorating and the cosmetic side of things. So it's a day-to-day -day worry. Poor Jamie is looking like a rabbit in headlights. So to get to grips with this house, the specialists are going to give it a thorough examination. They'll be probing inside, outside and underneath this property to find out exactly what's wrong and how much the repairs will cost. First on the list is the slimy black mould. There are signs of damp all over the house, but the worst attack is in the living room, where a large area is clearly visible in the corner. Now, this nifty bit of kit is a thermal imaging camera and it tells us where it's hot and where it's cold. So if I put it onto me, you can see that I'm hot in the room and the room's really cold. So we're going to look in this corner where we know we've got a problem. It's really cold in the corner, which would suggest that it's wet. And ultimately, that is not healthy for the house. If you ignore it, it will only get worse. We're going to find out exactly how toxic this black mould is. Jeff Charlton specialises in the analysis and treatment of mould in the home. 
what I've found is that the amount of moisture that's in the air is similar to that of a flooded home. We've got two types of mould that's growing on the wall. One is a white furry type mould that looks like aspergillus and the second mould is a black slime mould which is known as stachybotrys. This is a serious health threat, so I would only live in this house if I wore a respirator 24-7. It sounds as though it's a good idea for Jamie and Charlotte to deal with this swiftly. But the problems don't end there. A major structural issue is the gable wall. It's bowing in the middle so badly the render is popping off. Structural engineer Simon Pitchers has over 20 years surveying experience. His first job is to examine the extent of the movement. This is what's really worrying me, is that crack up there. This is 10 millimetres wide. Now, as soon as you get into double figures, you're into the mother of all cracks. It's suggesting that this side wall has moved away from the rest of the building. We may well have a subsidence problem. This is a serious problem that we need to investigate. Subsidence is when a house starts sinking into the ground it's built on, and it could be exacerbating the bowing gable wall. To the naked eye, there's signs of movement on this end wall, but to be absolutely sure how much it's moving, we're using a plumb bob test, which means that we're tying a piece of string to the top, it has a heavy weight on the bottom, and we're seeing what the distance is at the top compared to the bottom. We've got 40 millimetres up here, okay. Sarah. We've got 100 mil up down the bottom, so that's, so that's 60 mil difference, which is about that much. That's quite a lean. The same test at different points along the wall confirms our worst fears. The whole wall, then, is leaning by about the same amount. This is not good. A 60 mil difference is some significant movement, so the question is what's happening with the foundations? To find out, we dig down to see if the ground around the foundations is solid or not. That does not look at all good. This is very, very soft material. I can squeeze it through my fingers. Absolutely unsuitable for constructing this kind of structure. This auger test proves this end of the house is sitting on soggy ground. More digging is needed to find where ground firm enough to support the foundations is. Ooh. So this is taken from the hole at a depth of 1.5 metres below the foundations, and that is the stuff that actually would be suitable to support that building. But it's a long way down. We need to find out what's making the earth so soggy. In my experience, the first place to look is always the drains. Let's get up. Oh, yes. So we've got this fantastic camera. Look, there's a camera on the end of it. <laughs> so we're going to stick this camera down the drains and see what's happening and check whether the drains are working or, or not. OK, so, so it's going down the downpipe. And now we're going into the drains themselves. OK, so what's this here, Ian? That's tree roots. And there's a massive open joint there. That's yeah. going to allow a lot of escape of water at that point. So it's soaking this corner of the house, which is why the house in this point is collapsing. A further camera check in the main drain by the side of the house reveals tree roots. Separated joints and a large fragment of pipe which must have left a leaking hole somewhere. God knows how they're going to get that out. It's going to probably have to be dug out. It all points to water leaking from the drains into the ground the house is built on, which is causing the end wall to subside. If they ignore it, this end of the house could eventually collapse. They need to know just how serious a problem this is. So this is a demonstration to explain what's happening to your foundations, where the water is soaking into the ground and the house is, is dropping down. So the brick represents your house, and this is the soil underneath. Now, what's happening every time it rains? Because the water is not draining away, it's basically soaking slowly into the ground. And as it soaks into the ground, the ground compresses and it turns into a sort of muddy bog. As you can see, the straw here was sitting on the top and the water forces the air out and your house is sinking. 
if you leave it to continue to sink, you're going to find there's more and more damage that needs to be overcome on the house right, itself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to cost more and more money the longer you leave it. One side of the house is quite literally sinking down into the ground, so mm. the job can't be done quick enough as far as we're concerned. Yeah, we've got to stop it now, haven't we? Are you quite worried about it? Very, yeah. very yeah. worried. Because at some point, could it go like that? Leaking drains are more common and harmful than you might think, and they can go unnoticed for years. Cracks can be caused by tree root penetration, continual vehicle pressure, and the weight of the ground above. Even the tiniest crack will allow water to escape, and once water escapes under foundations, it will weaken them and potentially cause subsidence. Possible signs of subsidence are cracks which appear in the same place inside and outside of a building, cracks that appear at weak points such as around doors and windows, and cracks at the join where an extension meets an original structure. When you buy a property, chances are the drains are the same age as the house. Jamie and Charlotte's house is 100 years old, and at this age, it's not surprising some of the drains are shot. I mean, the reality is if you don't deal with this, the house will only continue to sink. So there's quite a lot of drainage work that needs to go on, which in reality is likely to cost somewhere up to probably about £5,000. Is that something that you're expecting at all? No. <laughs> it's a lot of money, but doing this will stop their home from sinking. It will also stop the moisture that feeds the mould growing in the living room. We sent samples of this to a laboratory and the results are back. In a Petri dish, in two days in an incubator, it looks like that. So that's what you're inhaling mm. in here. Not good, is it? No, I'm going to hold my breath. This is quite highly toxic. Um, it's linked to asthma and even neurological diseases and breathing problems, because it's mm. just not a very nice mould to have around. Mm -hmm. So, really, you want to get it out. Yeah, as soon as possible, really, don't we? The thought of Charles and, well, all of us breathing that sort of stuff in is... Mm. Well, yeah. Is, uh... You're not going to get rid of it unless you dry the place out, though, because that's how it grows, is it likes nice wet walls. Mm. So there are specialists who would get rid of it um, for you, and that would cost you £5,000. To remove the mould and fix the drains could cost about £10,000, which would be Charlotte and Jamie's entire budget. But they're both issues that cannot be ignored. The fact that the mould could be a cause of breathing problems, respiratory problems, asthma, makes me feel hugely guilty that I've moved my family in here. I'm worried that it may be linked to some coughs and colds that all of us have had recently, and that's really, really scary. To try to make their money go further, Jamie rings his insurance company to see if they might pay for the drains to be repaired. We've got some uh, tree root damage. Uh, At last, good news for their finances. The drainage of the... Uh, the water that is... Uh, Buildings insurance is a requirement for most mortgages, but even if you own your home outright, it's worth considering for peace of mind. We've spoken to the insurance company and they've agreed that uh, they're going to send somebody out to get this work dealt with. We're only having to pay the excess, which frees up a, a huge amount of that money. The fact that this money can then be put to not necessarily a better use, but another use within the house is, is, is certainly of great relief to both of us. The workman arriving to fix the drains is the first step of getting Jamie and Charlotte's house on the road to a healthy recovery. Rather than dig up the whole driveway, they use a less disruptive solution to fix the main drain. Once a section of pipe has been removed, a liner soaked in resin is inserted into the drain. When this is in place, a plastic sock is inflated inside, which expands to the size of the drain. The resin is allowed to harden, and then the sock's deflated and removed, leaving a tough, hard lining in the drain and no leaks. Fixing the other drain from the downpipe involves replacing a short section of pipe. Finally, the ground can start to dry out and the house stops sinking. Job should be a good one. 
As the rainwater can now flow away freely, it also means the living room walls can start drying out. Here, Jamie is getting rid of the black mould himself. If you're doing this at home, you can use a mould eradication kit. They cost about £50 and are available from specialist suppliers. Obviously, this will only work if the damp causing the mould has been dealt with. Before he tackles the mould, he needs to remove the old damp wallpaper. First, he uses a product to kill and clean all visible signs of mould. Then he coats the walls in a mould barrier to prevent it from regrowing. When they come to redecorate this room, adding a fungicide to the paint or wallpaper paste will give it a further layer of protection. The main thing is that the mould's gone now, so I will be breathing easier knowing it's done. Fixing the drains was essential repair work Jamie and Charlotte weren't expecting to do. And they still haven't tackled the bowing wall or the leaking roof, which means they can't get on with any of their planned renovations. The impact on the family is absolutely huge. We don't feel like we're living the family dream at all, which we expected um, to be moving to the new house. It feels really restrictive. It feels like our life's temporarily on hold. It also makes me a bit upset, thinking, well, how long is this going to go on for? If it was temporary, then that would be fine, but at the moment I can't see an end to it. Coming up, this family are faced with yet another structural problem. Because it's not tied in, ultimately, the back wall of the house will collapse, which means even more work for Jamie. Time is always against you one way or another. When Jamie and Charlotte Bates bought an Edwardian house, they thought a little cosmetic work would turn it into their dream home. Little did they realise it was full of leaks and cracks and mould, and that slowly but surely it was sinking into the ground. Now they're well on their way to putting the action plan to fix their home into practice. So often when you unearth one problem, it can reveal another lurking behind the scenes. And this is what's happening now. It turns out the roof is sagging. What I'm looking at here is a purlin. This is a large piece of wood which supports the rafters of the roof. And this purlin is actually sagged quite considerably. That suggests that these rafters are moving outwards and downwards, and so we're getting what's known as roof spread. Roof spread means a roof is starting to splay out and collapse. A conventional roof resists failure because the timbers form a triangle holding it together. Jamie and Charlotte's roof isn't a conventional construction. The front elevation is higher than the back elevation, and so there's nothing to hold these rafters in place. As a result, the roof is spreading, and if it's not fixed and tied together, it will ultimately collapse. And I'm worried that's a very real danger for this house. Wow, this is fantastic. When you're a bloke who looks at cracks, look at the width of that. And that is showing us how this front wall here has moved away from this partition. And that really is the best evidence I've ever seen of roof spread in my life. Well, Simon might be excited by this discovery, but I have to break yet more bad news to Jamie and Charlotte. If you leave it, eventually, it'll become a very serious problem, which means you have to take the whole roof structure off and start mm -hmm. again. So the bad news is that for a new roof, you're probably looking at about £10,000. Is that in any way what you're expecting? Um, no, not really. <laughs> we haven't got that much of a budget, to be honest. Jamie and Charlotte are taken aback. When you're trying to live the dream, it's disappointing to any homemaker to have to put all of the budget into invisible structural work. But to show them how worthwhile investing in the roof is, I'm bringing them to the biggest building testing centre in the country in Watford to show them how roofs work. What we have here is a scale model of your roof. So we're going to put weight and load onto the top of it to show what will happen over time if you do nothing about it. So I think we'd better stand back here. The weight of Jamie and Charlotte's roof in itself is already causing it to spread, but the situation could easily get worse if extra weight is added. In recent years, we've suffered harsh winters with increased snowfall in this country. A five centimetre layer of snow sitting on a roof could increase the load by as much as a tonne. 
that could push a weak roof to disaster. So now we're at about a quarter of a tonne. Now you can see it's starting to give. This is at nearly half a tonne. You're starting to rotate from the second block up. That's effectively the brick wall and it's pushing the top of your brick wall over and you'll find that the course of bricks just under the end of the rafters will start to move out. Oh, those bottom joists are falling out as well, aren't they? Because it's not tied in, you're going to end up with total roof failure. It's terrifying, isn't it, to think that you could possibly live with this above your head, literally. It just makes me want to run away and sort of hide. Running away isn't going to stop Jamie and Charlotte's roof from failing, and they don't have the thousands of pounds it would cost to redesign and rebuild it. But there is another option. It involves a bit more work on Jamie's part, but if they're up for it, it could save them a lot of money. So now this is a, another scale model of your roof. This is the support that we'd suggest that you put in, tying the rafters together. This is the quickest, cheapest and easiest way to prop the roof so that the ridge can't drop and the roof can't spread. And it's something you can do yourselves for not very much money and then you can sleep easily in your beds at night knowing that the fact that this triangle isn't completed is not the end of the world. To prove this is going to provide enough support to stop the roof from spreading further, we're going to perform the same test on the reinforced model. This is the point at which the other roof fails. You're about triple your failure load of last time. Four times your failure load of last time, and it's beginning to fail. As you can see from this experiment, the central prop means that it can take far greater load than you're ever going to have with some slates and even a load of snow on the roof. And that will keep it sound and secure so that you don't need to worry about living inside the house. The solution at this stage is really very inexpensive. The solution, if you leave it, will be very, very, very expensive. Do you feel sort of relieved there's such a simple, easy fix for this? Yeah, definitely. This job is not one job that can be delayed. It's got to be sorted now. Now we've been shown uh, the problems with the roof and how to uh, put them right, it's of paramount importance to deal with it as soon as possible. The good thing is that it can be done pretty quickly and pretty cheaply, which are two words that we like at the moment because we're running out of money. I have every faith that Jamie can do this himself. He's already doing much of the work on this house, as well as juggling a full-time job, family life and worrying about mounting costs. But here's another job we're going to take on together. We're going to secure this roof in two directions. One, by propping the ridge up so it can't drop any further, and also by putting a, a cross beam that's going to tie one roof slope to the other roof slope and also bolt into the vertical prop for the ridge. And that action together is going to secure the entire roof and stop it collapsing. It's vital the post sits on top of a load-bearing wall and it's a really tight fit to give the roof maximum support. With the crossbeam screwed into the central post and the rafters, this is a positive step to keeping the roof propped up. And so a number of these down the length of the roof is going to secure it and make sure that the ridge can't drop and the roof can't splay. Fantastic. One less problem to worry about. But how's everything else going? You're at the moment trying to juggle a full-time job during the day and doing building work, really, because you're a shop fitter, aren't you? And then you're coming home at night to a building site. And you've got a family. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so are you, are you finding that tricky? Uh, yeah, it, it is very tricky. Um, really struggling with the lack of time with my family at the moment. Work-wise, to be doing the same thing in the evening as you are in the day, seven days a week, is starting to drag a little, I must admit. And also the, you know, the lack of cleanliness throughout the house. You know, everywhere is covered in dust all the time and, you know, it must be driving my wife mad, you know? And then when you add on to that the financial restraint with not having much money or much time to get it done, it, it's very, very difficult. I think Jamie is proving himself to be a real hero by shouldering the lion's share of the work to take care of his family. 
I do offer to help, but he doesn't tend to take much help from me because I don't think I can do things as well as he can. Six more crossbeams later and the roof is props. But there's no chance for Jamie to lay down his tools. We're straight on to fixing another problem. The roof is secure and subsidence has been stopped. And now we need to fix the bowing gable wall that's coming away from the floors, which could collapse. To avoid that happening, we're going to tie it all together and hold it in place. And whilst that's not going to undo the damage that's been done, it will hold it rigid and stop it getting any worse. And that's really all that matters. Right, yeah. To get someone else to do this would cost around a couple of thousand pounds. But there's a bargain basement way to make sure the floor joists are rock solid. We're going to use this wall tie, which looks like a screw, but actually is very carefully engineered to be able to go right through the centre of every joist, and a normal screw would really struggle to do that. We're going to fix the joists to the wall using specially engineered reinforced ties. These ties are drilled through the wall from the outside into the joists, securing them to the wall. This will stop the gable wall from bowing any further and the first floor from collapsing. And along with the fact that this happens on every single joist as you go through the house, together, that bracing action is going to secure your house. How would you describe how you'd feel when this is all finished? Feel like we're secure, won't it? Like the house is actually tied together and, yes, we've got lots of other work to do, but at least it's a solid structure. The consequences of not dealing with it are just massive, aren't they? The good thing is, is that you have caught it in time, and that's, that's really exciting, because yeah. if you'd left it another 10 years, we'd be having a very different conversation. The wall ties are inserted from the outside of the house. You need to drill a guide hole through the brick, but it's important to stop as soon as you hit the joist. Perfect. The tie will embed itself into the joist and secure it to the wall, ensuring the floor won't fall to the ground. And it's gone. So yeah, simple as that. I personally would drive these into every joist, because then you've got a completely secure house, which you never need to worry about again on this wall. So are you up for doing all of that yourselves? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? So less than 100 quid, house secure. Yeah, sounds so. like a bargain. At last, we're really winning and can start on the interior. Charlotte's been waiting a long time to get to the decorating stage. Have there been moments where you just thought, you know what, I just, I can't face it, just walk away? Sometimes I'm sort of lying awake at night thinking, oh, just sell the house, just sell the house and buy somewhere new, but we've got to follow our dream through. We've pretty much got as low as we're going to get, and we're slightly on that upturn now. How have you found the, the work so far? Has it been... Has it been exciting moving forward, or...? Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting moving forward. At least we can actually start doing a bit more of the fun stuff and picking out some nice interiors. You will make it to home, it will be lovely. It's just, it's just a question of persevering, really, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> Making this house safe has been an ordeal. But at last, there's just one big job left, fixing the leaking roof on the extension to make it watertight. For this, they're getting in a specialist company. In just one day, they add a slight pitch and cover the extension with a durable PVC that, as well as providing weatherproofing, blends well with the Edwardian exterior. Problem sorted. With the drips stopped, the buckets make way for a shiny new kitchen. I haven't had a kitchen for about a year, so it does feel very strange, but it's great to see the progress and looking how I imagined it to look. And tireless Jamie cracks on with decorating the entire house, which, after all he's been through, seems almost a break from hard work. Once you're painting, you know that everything structurally has been finished and uh, you just then try to make it pretty, I suppose. Coming up, six months after first meeting Jamie and Charlotte, it's time to see their house finished and find out if it managed to become their dream family home. Wow! It's six months since I first met Jamie and Charlotte. Back then, the gable wall was sinking, the roof was in danger of collapsing, and the whole house felt unsafe. I've come back to see if they're finally living the family dream they'd always hoped for. Jamie's been working round the clock ever since I first met them, and I can't wait to see the results.
gosh, this looks amazing. Brilliant. Is the rest of it as gorgeous as the hall? We think so. We're, we're really pleased, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. So. Entering the house, it smelt damp and was a little bit dingy. The wallpaper in the living room was peeling away and behind it looked slimy black mould. Now, every trace of that has gone. And they've got a sitting room to be proud of. This is completely unrecognisable. It's fantastic. Is this how you always imagined this room to be? Yes, I think in some ways it's a bit better than I imagined it to be because it was the grottiest room. This wall here was completely and totally covered in mould and you did say that your son had been a bit unwell. Since we've sort of dealt with the mould and everything else, it is noticeable to realise that he is not coughing like it was before. How do you feel about it now? But as soon as we discovered all the problems, we sort of evacuated the room because obviously we didn't want to spend any time in here at all. But now I want to spend time in here. Do you see yourselves relaxing on the sofa with your feet firmly placed on the table, glass of wine in hand now? Yes, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm definitely downing tools now for the summer and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a house to enjoy, I think. Well, it's unrecognisable. It's fantastic. The roof of the extension at the back of the house was leaking, making this whole space unusable. Now it's been replaced and they've created the ultimate family living space. With a state-of-the-art kitchen any cook would be proud of. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Please tell me this is better than you ever imagined it to be. It absolutely is. You know, to, to have a kitchen that we can now use is one thing, but this is so much more than that, isn't it? Yeah. It really feels like one space, mm. whereas before it did feel like a bit of a dark kitchen and a stuck-on extension off the yeah. back. And considering that you had a shower in the middle where the roof was leaking, <laughs> not a sign of a leak now. So it's going to be a fantastic space for your family to hang out. I think this is where we'll spend most of our time. This will be the, the family room. Jamie and Charlotte's house had problems below with leaking drains causing subsidence, problems above with the roof spreading and problems at the side with a gable wall bowing out dangerously. Really, there couldn't have been more things happening to the house to make it fall to bits. No. Now they've repaired the damage and redecorated and are well on their way to transforming this house into a very comfortable home. And how does it feel now? Because all of that work you've done yourself, haven't you? You've tied the house together. Yeah, absolutely. We know for a fact that everything is secure now, which is a big relief to us, I think. When you started this project, you had about £10,000 to spend. How much did it end up actually costing you? Uh, probably about £30,000, 30, £30, mm. all told. So where has the extra money come from? Was it really hard to get hold of? Yes, we had to borrow from everyone, my mum and dad. Anyone who would give us any money, basically. <laughs> They've had to beg and borrow and have promised to pay back generous friends and relatives. True family spirit has helped save this house from rack and ruin. To get this house to where it is now for that amount of money is really impressive. Along the way, they've gone the extra mile and added an impressive skylight and bifold doors that lead out into their lovely garden. And there's a bonus that if they did decide to sell, they'd be likely to make their money back. Obviously now, it's all beautiful and you can forget all the blood, sweat and tears a little bit, but would you do it all again? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we're never moving from here, but, you know, to have, to have bought this property, which, you know, initially we fell in love with, and I think compromising your time with your family has been probably the most difficult part of it. Mm. You're kind of doing it for your family, but in the meantime, you're not getting any time with your family, so it's, it's a difficult one to try and juggle, I think. Mm. But worth it all now. Definitely worth it all now, yeah. Live in the dream now. <laughs> Live in the dream. Pretty much the only thing left to do with the house is to render the outside. The only thing I would say is, as you've done lots and lots of work to the building and it's now completely shored up, I'd be tempted to leave it a year before you re-render it just to let any natural settling that it's going to do happen so it doesn't crack. Today, those generous friends and relatives are over to see what all the fuss was about. 
transformation is just amazing. The space is just delightful. A family house that you would just dream of. We both work very hard. It's real total commitment and I'm very, very proud of what they've achieved. <laughs> well, congratulations, you guys. I, I can't quite believe that you've managed to pull this off, but it is an unbelievable transformation. So, well done to you. Cheers. When Charlotte and Jamie first saw this property, they saw a grand Edwardian house they thought Jamie could easily restore. But lurking beneath the tired decor were a catalogue of serious structural problems that left them not knowing which way to turn. Six months later, they've tied the house together, repaired the damage, and now finally they can get on with living in their family home. <laughs>